Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be doing a request video that was asked for on my live stream. Uh, during the live stream, I showed off a feature that I've got in my mobile game I'm developing, where it's a uh, top-down game. You've got the two characters, and as they move around, um, the camera zooms in and out, like the uh, Y value changes. That's the player. Whoops. The camera's Y value changes uh, to fit both the players on the screen at all times, <clears throat> and then it also. Uh, moves to be in the center of the two players. So if he walked up there and then he walked down there, it would zoom out but always be in the center. Uh, Brackies, if you don't know who Brackies is, go check him out. He's a big Unity YouTuber, you probably know. Uh, he did a video on this, but it was like a side on and it was changing field of view and it was a little bit different. So I'm going to show you like my version of this. It's quite similar, but um, you know, someone asked for it, so I thought I'd show how to do it. Um, we'll get into the video, it shouldn't take too long, it's quite a simple thing. Uh, but before we start, I want to thank my patrons with special thanks to Michael, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Bourne for their donations on Patreon this month. If anyone else is able to help out support the community, it would mean a lot, and the link is in the description below. Uh, but apart from that, let's jump into it. So, all you need for the setup is really a camera and some things you want it to follow. So I've got just a camera, obviously a floor, and some players. Not going to set up player movement. Uh, when I do the test, I can just obviously move their X and Y to show you it working. So that's what we're going to do need to add a script to the main camera, so I'm just going to call it, um, I don't know, let me make a scripts folder quickly in case I ever use this project again, so scripts, and we'll go create a new C-sharp script and call it um, multiple um, targets camera. Let me just reload that, something's gone on. I guess I'll just double click again. All right, um, let's go and attach it to our camera before I forget. So just drop it on the camera and let's get into it. So what do we need to do? Um, <clears throat> first of all, we need to make it an instance, like a static class. Uh, there are other ways of doing this. In my own game, I've used like an event system, but I need to do a whole nother video, like a mini series on event systems uh, to set that up. But for now, I'll just use the good old uh, singletons. So we'll have a public static uh, multiple targets camera instance, <clears throat> which is get private set. So uh, when we re reference this from uh, elsewhere, we'll, um, we can only get it, we can't set it, that's the point. And then in the awake function, when this object appears in the scene, we'll say if the instance, I need to zoom in probably, if the instance is null, so if there is no current multiple targets camera in the scene, then we'll say the instance is us, we are now the instance, uh, else, if there is actually uh, something in the scene and it's not us, that is the um, instance, then we want to destroy us. Just basically means there might be a duplicate of us. Um, we might have accidentally put the prefab in twice, so this will just delete one of the extra ones basically, so we're just left with one because that's the, that's the point. So there's our singleton, um, and that just helps us set it up. I usually, when I write a singleton, I'll put like hashtag um, region singleton like that and then after it, I'll put hashtag end region um, let's put some spaces and if I press this little minimize button it hides that all there you can normally do that for functions but the point is and like ifs and anything if you do a region it's like a custom one so I want this entire thing to be in a uh, like hideaway box thing and now we have to put the variables we want so we want a float for the min distance for zoom um, and we want a max um, distance for, well, yeah, for zoom, um, like so. So what that means is um, when the players are in a certain range, this is kind of up to you if you add this or not, um, when the player's in a certain range, you might want the camera not to zoom in. So for example, I might want the minimum zoom to be the camera having a Y of 10, and then the max, well, the max could be whatever you want, really. If the ma you know, you want it always to have them on, so the max should technically be infinite. But the min, you want the min not to be zero, because otherwise, you know, you'll go into the ground or you'll get too close and it'll be too zoomed and you can't see anything. So the min zoom will be like 10. Um, and I'm actually going to put, this isn't max distance for zoom, it's the just max um, possible distance. And what I mean by that, uh, I'll put that as like 30f. This value, you should set it to the maximum, like, um, length or width uh, of your, like, arena as such. So, for example, in mine, um, I know this object is 50 
across. So obviously the max distance they can be away from each other is 50. That doesn't mean the max total distance. Like if I put one at that corner and one at that corner, it actually just takes the horizontal or the vertical. It will not take a diagonal length. Um, that's simply because it needs to, the camera's a rectangle and it needs to fit them both on. So um, <clears throat> when we actually decide how far to zoom, we get the closest, like the shortest distance between them. So basically if your floor is, you know, 50 units along, then this max possible distance should be 50. So I could default it to 50 if I wanted to. Um, and then this min distance for zoom will be, if I go to the players, look on the camera, this is how far away the players need to be away from each other before we start zooming out. So currently they're at an X of five and an X of minus five. So obviously there's 10 units between them. So maybe I want 10 to be that number. So I might go for 10. Maybe I'll go for a little bit further, maybe 12, but you know, for now I'll just say 10 F, I can tweak it if I need to. Um, next we want a smooth time, which is basically, uh, you know, how smooth, well, it's just the smoothing really. Um, it's how, because if you set this to one, then what would happen is the camera would always like um, follow them and would have no delay, but delay, you know, makes it look nicer and cleaner. You don't want it like stuck to them basically. So I might default that to 0.5F. That's the value I found to work. And then we want a min Y and a max Y. So we want to obviously say the min Y, um, so it's a float. The min Y is equal to, uh, was it 10F? I think I said, camera, yeah, 10. And then the max could be like, well, let, let me think. If I zoom out till I've got the entire thing in my distance, it's like 50, 45. Um, obviously you would probably not have an arena this big anyway. So let's just put that to 10. And I'm gonna say this um, max Y is about 50 in case it ever got that far. It's up to you for these values. The max could be anything, but I'd recommend putting it like the size of your arena. Um, and then finally, we need a serialized field. This could be just a private list, but I'll show you why we're gonna expose it. Uh, this is a list of transforms called like targets. And it's a new list of transform. And I'm also gonna store a private vector free velocity for the smoothing. Uh, this is just a reference variable. <clears throat> okay. So now let's get into writing the code. Um, we want to use the, the late update. The reason we're going to use a late update is because um, the characters that are moving in your game will be moving in the update function. And late update happens every frame, but it's always called after the update. And the point of a camera is you're following movement. So you want movement to happen, then you want you to follow the movement. If you did it the other way, it'd be a bit jittery or a bit laggy, like the camera wouldn't, you know, be in the right position. I think with smoothing, this would be less noticeable, but it always makes more sense to put it in late update. So the character moves in its frame and then you move your camera position. So we wanna say, if targets.count is zero, return. So basically, if we haven't got any targets, then don't do anything. And then we want to move and we want to zoom. These are just two functions to separate out our code. So private void move, I don't like the auto correction there. Uh, and private void zoom. So let's go write these functions. Um, so first of all, move. Well, for move, we need to store a vector free uh, center point. So the center point is quite literally just a vector free for the center between these two players, these two objects. And we're gonna have to write a function to calculate this. Well, we don't have to, but we should. So if I write down here a private vector free, so it's gonna return a vector free called get center point. These function names and things will be basically the same that Brecky's did, but the actual logic inside them is going to be different because it's not for a side-on game where we're changing field of view. We're doing a Y height and it's, I've changed some of the variable names and what we're actually using them for. So it's a bit of a different effect, um, but his video is still really good. And that's how I learned this first thing anyway. So, um, so long as, <coughs> well, no, sorry. If, if there's only one target, if we only have one target, then the center is wherever it is. So targets zero dot position. That is, um, if there's only one, then obviously it is at the center because there's nothing else to compare it to. Then we want to use bounds, which is a constructor, I'm um, sorry, a struct that's already in the Unity engine. So bounds equals, and what we actually want to do is want to write another function to do this bounds calculation. So private bounds encapsulate targets. So the purpose of this function is to basically pass in all of our targets and it will return us a struct bounds, 
based on um, <clears throat> where the targets, where the positions are. Think of it as like if I went in and I said, all right, we have a target here and a target here and a target here and a target here. What it would do is it would draw a box that in, um, the smallest box possible that has all these things in. So basically, this is the most outer point. So it'd go down until it hits the lowest point. So it'd come across until it hit the most outer point here, which go up here until it's in line with the other one and have a straight line across. So effectively, that's what it's doing. It's um, returning a box or data about this that en uh, encapsulates all the targets. That's the point. So what we do for this function is we create a new bounds. So bounds equals new bounds. And you can pass in um, a center and size. So the center is just the first thing's position. And then the size can just be 0, 0, 0 to start off with. And we're going to say for each transform target. So basically for everything we're meant to be following, obviously the list is called targets. So for every target and targets, bounds. Now there's a function on this uh, struct called encapsulate. And as you see here, grows the bounds to include the point. So just like I was saying, I drew a box and then it had all the points in it. This would be essentially adding a new point to draw a box around. So we're going to add target dot position. So it's going to add all of them into that. Um, and then we're going to say return bounds. So we've got the data on um, a box that includes all of the uh, all of the things we're meant to be following. We've got a box for that. So we're just going to say encapsulate target to get the data. And then now uh, this bounds has a center variable. So vector free um, center right is equal to uh, bounds dot center. So the center point of the bounding box. So it the box has a width and a height. So it just takes half the width, half the height, and you're in the center. Um, and then we just want to say center dot y is equal to zero f. In my case, um, I don't care the y offset between the characters. Maybe you do, but uh, I don't really care about the y offset. If they go up some stairs, it doesn't really affect it. So just set that to zero. I'm going to return center. Centers are vector free. That's what we're returning. So if I go back up now, this um, center point that we're trying to get up here, we've already, I've just written the code that does the um, like calculations. So we're just going to say, you know, get the center point. Um, and now we're going to set the center points y to um, our y. Uh, I mean, technically, then, yeah, we don't really have to set that to zero there because we're going to be overriding it anyway. Um, and then we want to set our own position as the camera. Transform, whoops. Transform dot position is equal to vector three dot smooth damp. So that's going to smoothly go between where we are and the other place. So where are we? Wait, trans vector three. <clears throat> between our current position and the center point, that's where we're trying to go to. And then for the smoothness, well, we'll say ref <coughs> velocity. That's that variable up here that we just read. Um, it just uses it to know the current velocity of the camera so we can move it smoothly and we pass in smooth uh, our smoothing variable and I think this is going off the screen so let's just bring it down all right <clears throat> and put a semicolon it's just a bit easier to read if you've got all the parameters there rather than going off the screen so that's that this function moves and that's basically done now we can actually test the moving now if you want so if we go back into unity and press play there shouldn't be any zooming, but there should be some moving. Um, so if I close this, I think I said I would set this to like 10 or something. <clears throat> so currently there's no targets, right? So if we move the player, nothing's going to happen. But if we go back to the um, camera and we drag in the player and drag in player 2, it should, if they move, it should, if they move, let me have a look. Um, Apparently the smoothing, the smoothing was like 50. I must have set that back. Soon. So now if we move these characters, it tries to get them in. Now because the smoothing is so, well, the, the parameters aren't really set up very well. Like smoothing should be a little more like 0.1. The max possible distance should be like 50. What The min distance was 10. The min y and the max y should be like 30. Uh, now, currently, we're not zooming. That's the main problem. We're moving to the right position, but we're not zooming. Look. So if I move the character, it works. But we need to actually zoom out, because eventually we'll get so far apart we can't fit it on the screen, in which case the camera needs to increase its Y. 
that's the next goal. The final bit is to do the zooming. So for zoom, we want to say float greatest distance, greatest distance is equal to, and we'll write a function for, you know, get greatest distance. So we need a function. So it's a private float it's going to return called get greatest distance. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the encapsulate target. So bounds is equal to encapsulate targets. And what we're going to do is we're going to return a value dependent on which is the greatest. So what you can actually do is you can say return bounds dot size dot x is greater than bounds dot size dot z. Now I need to explain this because some of you guys might not understand what this means. So well, I'll write out the whole line and then I'll explain it. It'll be easier. So size dot x comma bounds dot size dot z. All right. So this line, it looks a bit odd for, you know, returning a float, but the boundary that we've got on this players inside the targets thing, um, that has a size on its X and its Z, right? It has an X and a Z length, basically. That's just the total size of the box uh, in the X and Z. Now we want to return the X or the Z depending on which one's bigger. So what we're saying in this one line is this is a boolean, right? We're saying this is greater than this. So that's either going to be true or false. So if bounds.size, imagine this is an if bounds.size.x is greater than bounds.size.z. If the x is greater than the z, then return the x. Otherwise, return the z. That's really what it means. It's saying do this. If it's true, do this. Otherwise, do this. If x is greater than z, return x. Otherwise, return the z. Pretty simply, just return the bigger one. You could write, if it's this, return this. Else, if it's this, return this. But we'll use up so many more lines, we could just do it in this one liner. It's quite nice. It's not too... Uh, so sometimes doing stuff in less lines isn't better if it's like really unneat, but this is quite a neat way of doing it. Uh, it's quite easy to read. Just, if this is greater than this, return this. Otherwise, return this. So now, we know what the greatest distance is between the two like players, or two targets. So if I say, if the greatest distance is less than the min distance for zoom, then just set the greatest distance equal to zero. And that's just because um, we have specified a minimum distance for the zoom. So if it's not if it's not greater than that, then we'll just uh, set it to zero. But as soon as it is greater than that, then it's fine. We'll start zooming with whatever that distance is. So float, we need to calculate our new y value. So the new y value is mathf.lerp, and we're gonna lerp between the minimum y and the maximum y that we specified, our min, zoom, and max, zoom, by, and how much? Well, we're going to do it by greatest distance divided by the max possible distance. So this value should be between um, 0 and 1. So when it's 0, we'll be at the min y, and when it's 1, we'll be at the max y. I've used lerping a lot, so if you've watched my channel, you know what it is, and if you've done maths and know what linear interpolation then. Uh, you should have seen this in Unity before. It's really good for basically moving things between two positions over time rather than just setting them. So we want to move our camera from the min to the max depending on how far away we are basically from the players or how far away the players are apart. And then once we're done, um, this is just calculating the y. So we need to actually do some moving. So transform.position is equal to a new vector free. And we only want to affect the y. So if you want to set the position but only... Um, I mean, to be honest, we could just use transform.translate. I guess that works. Transform.translate. Um, should that work? The, the problem with transform.translate actually is that um, we would then need to take into account um, the... Actually, no, because it's a new Y. We're not adding on a Y. We're actually just setting it new. So we should. we definitely should just set the position. So transform.position. This is the way I did it anyway, but I was thinking it might be in a neater way the x value should now be the same that it was. So transform.position.x, we don't want to change it. The y value, we want to lerp between um, our transform our current y, so mathf.lerp between our current y and the new y, new, new y, by time.delta time, because that's just going to make it smooth. And then um, transform.position.z, we don't want to affect it. Now, let me just neaten that up like I did earlier. So, go down, bring that down, bring that down. Make sure that 
uh, comma isn't there. So our x is the same, our z is the same, but our y is uh, going to lurk between our current y and our new y. So finally, well actually no, I think we've done. Uh, let's go test it. That should be right. Actually, wait, sorry, I need to, uh... all right, the min distance for zoom was like 10. I'll set it outside of play mode now so it saves. Uh, max was like 50, smoothing should be like 0.5. Min y, 10, max y, it's like 40 or something. So if we go put in these players as the targets now and press play, see what happens when we move them. I don't know if the numbers are exactly right, but it's fine, we can test. So it's zoomed out and we're going to move as we get closer we set to this and I notice how as I'm moving the y isn't actually changing we're just moving on the x that's just because the um, we're within the min distance for a zoom as soon as we get out the min distance for a zoom we'll start zooming out and as we go further away we'll start zooming out even more and if, if I go all the way up here and I take player 2 and move him all the way down here and move him to the right Notice how they're still both in the range of the camera. And this, if that just gets set to zero, zero, and that gets set to zero, zero, they're both at the same place. Now, the reason we have a min distance for zoom is because if I set min distance for zoom to zero, and then put them like both inside each other, well, actually, no, we've already set a min Y. So actually, it kind of protects itself there. But the problem is if your Y was like lower, then you basically just be going inside them. So you really want to like limit that. Um, now the last thing to show you actually is what if you want to spawn characters in just like during the gameplay and have them appear on the list of things. What you need to do is we need to make a script, one last script, it's pretty easy, called, I, I mean I call it point of interest. So basically if something has a point of interest script on it then when it spawns the camera includes it in its range of vision. Otherwise, then it just, just gets rid of it. So this point of interest, um, let me just get rid of these unneeded using statements. All it's gonna say is on enable, so when it exists in the scene, we'll say um, camera, well, multiple thingy camera dot instance dot. We need to write a function in it really quickly to let us assign ourselves. So what we can do is we can say, uh, maybe around here, public void assign target or like add target it takes in a transform target or like new target so this is the new thing we want to be added and all we're going to say is if um, if not targets dot contains new target because there might be a case by accident where like um, it's already in the list you don't want to add it again so you want to make sure if it doesn't contain it then targets dot add the new target so we're going to add the new target and then equally we're just going to go public void remove target target transform target to remove if targets targets dot contains target to remove so just instead of saying if not we're going to say if we have to make sure it contains it before we do targets dot remove because if we try and remove uh, targets dot remove if we try and remove something that isn't in the list I think I'm pretty certain we get an error so we might as well avoid that so we call this to add and this to remove so what we'll say is when when we enable this object we want to add a target transform dot uh, no just transform sorry and then private void on disable multiple targets camera dot instance dot remove target transform so we're saying when this object exists in the scene add us to the list when we aren't in the scene anymore remove us from the list so what we can do is we can say player one um, is a point of interest player two is a point of interest the camera let's just remove it so there's nothing in the camera's list now but notice how when I press play because those players have the script on they are in the list when it press play. Uh, no, they're not apparently because, ah, so what's happened is um, I'm trying to add it on enable. And if I look up here, what's actually happening is it's, I think a race condition's happening where basically this awake is happening before this on enable. Because if we look over here, uh, unity um, event calling order. 
and scroll down, you'll see we have awake and then on enable. But the thing is, that sometimes, I don't know why, it just doesn't seem to happen sometimes. It happens in a different order. Like, um, I could use on start here just to see. It'd be interesting if that actually worked. So if I pressed this. Notice how it works this time. It's just a race condition. So those both are in the list now. And if I just destroyed this guy, then notice how um, the camera, it removes it from the list because that's what happens on disable. And now it's just focusing on this one guy. Then if I took the player and duplicated him and then moved, this one when it started because of the function on start, it's actually been added to the list and now it's a new target. And I can duplicate this and move it over here. And we've actually got three targets. So it's getting the, the middle of the three targets. So I can put this over here. We can duplicate and we can add another target. Uh, just keep adding new targets and it follows them. So it makes sure they're all on the screen at once. So yeah, that's the video. I uh, hope you liked it. Obviously it's quite a long video, but you know, we covered quite a lot then. It's a pretty cool camera trick. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and implement it in your games, get feed, uh, give feedback, you know, get back to me on how it works, if you enjoyed it, whatever. Uh, it'd mean a lot if you left a like and subscribed, and if you could help out on Patreon, it'd mean a lot. But apart from that, thanks for watching, and goodbye.